What's going on, guys? It's Mark with Limo Marketer here. I am joined by Mohammed Khalil from BNG out of the Bay Area. Thanks so much for hopping on and doing this with me today, Mohammed. Thank you so much, Mark, and thank you so much for having me today. And that's an opportunity for us. Yeah, no, for sure. So I put out a post on Facebook, uh, what, like a week ago or so, you know, just asking, you know, looking for uh, operators that have interesting stories that have, um, you know, preferably started like with Uber or Uber Black and now kind of transition out of that and um, have their own clients do affiliate work. And so Mohammed kind of gave me a brief kind of synopsis of his story. And I thought it was pretty fascinating. And I thought a lot of you guys that watch these videos uh, would probably get a lot of value because Mohammed's learned um, a great deal. And so uh, I thought we could start uh, with your story, Mohammed, how how did you get in the business? And you're you're not from the U.S. originally, right? Nope, from Egypt originally. So I came here since 2011 to pursue an MBA program in international business. And by 2012, Uber started to Uber started Uber Black or 2011 at that range. So I was lucky to be able to find that job next to my studies. That was the best. Uh, during like just to be able to do the assignments and study while I'm waiting for the clients in the cars and stuff like that. So uh, that's where I started Uber business, Uber Black. Long story short, after I got graduated, tried to find a job here in the United States, but just like I, it wasn't lucky. I got married, I got kids, find out that my only source of income is just Uber. So I decided to start to go all in with my limousine uh, company. Uh, okay. And that's where, yeah, that's where I went to the show, uh, LCT. That was first show in 2000, uh, 2019, March 2019. Yeah. And I gained a lot of values there. And this is where my kickstart was. Uh, came back and implemented all of that stuff that I learned from there. And uh, now we're uh, we're having a great team in the Bay Area. Uh, seven vehicles. We're doing 60% of affiliate work, 40% uh, of our own clients. Okay. Uh, yep. And that's how we started. That's long story short is the is the story. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. So tell me a little bit. So you started doing uh, Uber Black around 2012 when you were doing your studies because it kind of just fits in, right? You can turn the app on, um, go to class, go do your homework, you know, turn the app on again. Um, and you were in one of the original classes, right? With with Travis, was it the the yes. CEO, I believe, at the time yes. of Uber? Yes. And um, and so you were one of the first Uber Black drivers in the Bay Area. What 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 was that experience like? Was it so different then? Yes, of course. Oh, of course, it was very different. Because so I was I was working as a limousine uh, driver, part time uh, limo driver. Uh, when Travis went to all limousine companies uh, to attract, to onboard them on their Uber and the Uber app and talking about the technology and all of this, I was lucky to be in one of the limo companies who Travis visited so he can do the presentation and hop them in. So I it was got, like just a small group of you guys that kind of... Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I, I was there by instant in the office just waiting for a job. Whoa. So he just hopped in and met with the manager and started talking about the idea. And actually, I may, yeah, I, I start telling my dad, hey, dad, uh, we need, there's an Uber app that's coming. Let's do it in Egypt and they will buy us at the 2011 and nobody listened to me. I was just that crazy guy talking about like something magical is going to happen and nobody yeah. believe it. Yeah. So 12 uh, years later, look at them now, you know, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. crazy. So yeah, th this is how I, I got introduced to Uber. Uh, a year later, I decided to buy my own car and just do it as a full time, as a part time next to my job. Uh, it was, it was like, let me, we, we talked And this about, was before, sorry to interrupt. This was before, like, it was just Uber Black when it started out, right? Or yes, correct. it was just correct. the higher end. They weren't yes. doing the, the lower end stuff, correct? Yes, yes. And okay. the start, the startup mentality always looking for scalability. Uh, they said, let's, why we should take a hundred dollars from a million client around the world that we can take a dollar from 300 million people or three other like three billion people living around the world yeah so they targeted the mass production just like the mass people the taxi and that's where the quality went down and that's that was the chance for all limousine companies to gain back their market share sure uh yeah but let me tell you just we talked about 
how how this can benefit uh what's the difference like what's what's the what's the benefit what's the cons uh the pros and cons of doing uber what's the pros and cons of doing affiliate business what's the pros and cons of having exactly uh, your own client and if you can jump yeah so let's let's agree that as an io or as an independent operator someone who just started to have his own car there's no nothing can compete with uber black yeah for a small reason you get your 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 trip from sfo to sf you drop off for eighty dollars. In the trip, you get another ring from Berk from SF to Berkeley for another hundred dollar. You get another ring after dropping off back to SFO. That's a, like a four five hundred dollars in two two hours two hours and a half. Wow, that's not that's not going to happen in uh, in the limousine business. No, because basically in lim in limo we have to prepare between each ride. You have to make sure that the car is clean, the car is washed, sanitized, just to make sure about all of your trip details. You receive a call from our dispatch an hour before. You maybe receive a call from the other company dispatch like an hour before. So you have to be prepared for yeah. that kind of stuff. You can't even just dropping a client in, at the airport and just go have another client within 10 minutes or 15 minutes. That does not yeah. work in yeah. the demo. You're just going to lose your business. So it so, sounds like Uber Black is like incredible then. I mean, you make course. a lot of money and like you, you get job after job, but... Of course. So that's how it was. What's the, that's, so what's that's the deal? That day, that inconsistency. It's that's that's if it worked. That's if everyone. Oh, if you have I a just... lot of requests, if you're getting a lot of requests, yes, that's great. But if you're selling from four a.m. to ten a.m. for three four days, waiting for a ping, and you don't get anything, and you wasted your that that would days, happen like on consecutive days sometimes. That's happened to me many times when I started doing Uber, like back in 2013, 14 staying at like we have in san francisco the marine the marine area uh that's where the rich people lives and um from 4 a.m to 10 a.m to just have usually we get like three four airport rides some days you don't get any and you just have to waste your day you get you get tricked with the numbers that you're making every day yeah you can see three four five hundred dollars a day but some days you don't make anything so yeah the average like one of the best advices that i can give to all of the, the, the starters, the people who started, don't make your calculations on the daily basis. Make it on an average basis. Our industry now, it's a, in each city, it's a seasonal industry. Yeah. Seasons are different from city to a city. But you need to know when is busy, when is uh, slow. Because your calculations has to be on all over the year. You can't just be happy because January we made at 20, I made a $15,000, $17,000 as a driver. But February, March, April, May, I barely made $7,000. Wow, so that, the, that big of a, you know, of a gap, huh? Yes. And, and, and is and, it consistent year over year, at least? Like, you know, certain months are busier or is even that unpredictable? Because at least if it was some somewhat predictable, like, you know, certain months are going to be better than others, then maybe you could plan to like, or, or is that even kind of unpredictable? Let's agree that this comes with experience. Like my first year, uh, I was, my first year, I was hearing about the event from the guys that just thought, or maybe from the search price on Uber. I never knew about the event is going on. It's just like, oh, there's a search price 10x. And then you start, oh, there's something is going on. And then you learn. But now I have a calendar of what's going on in my city for the next year. I know what's yeah. going on. When is the busy never? But like, in San Francisco, for example, it's the past two years. It's very challenging. January is always busy because of JP Morgan. I hope they keep it for the next year. Okay. JP Morgan, all of us, we made that like me personally and the in, in our company, January covered us until the past month. We start picking wow, up that month. big. Yes, Incredible. San Francisco is going San Francisco is very affected from what's going on right now because what the bubble what we're at right now is the tech bubble yeah 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 totally we're the first one we're the tech hub yes whatever is happening here right now the the, the rest of the world will have will will feel it after but yeah. this is where it's going to start and we're the first guy we're the first ones who's feeling it uh it's inconsistent there is business i'm not saying there is not but it's yeah. not consistent uh number you're barely making it but it's not consistent but yeah but let's go back let's hop back to the, the is the is that back. why uh sorry to um interject is that why you ended up 
saying, Hey, I need to do something else because you mentioned you, you had a family, right? You maybe kids and you need consistent income, right? Is, yes. is that what made you decide to get into the limo industry? How'd you even find out about it? Was it a friend or did you just see these other drivers around? And you're like, wait, these aren't Uber drivers or I'm guessing you already knew about it, but how, how'd you like get into it really? So yeah, my brother, my brother and his wife and their kids came from Egypt to have, to pursue an MBA in international business as well. And okay. myself, yeah, and myself, I had a baby at that time. It was like a one year old and I got, I, I was married. So to, I got to a point of just like, I'm not going to keep looking for jobs. I just need a, a job. And since I got rejected everywhere, I decided to go all in, in the only thing that I know in the United States, other than my studies, which is the chauffeur industry. Sure. Uh, oh, so you got a job. I never got a job. Oh, I was trying to get a job, but I was rejected in all of them. All the big companies. Really? In Silicon Valley they just weren't business. hiring. Uh, wait, wait. Oh, I'm talking about limo with... companies. I'm talking about oh. limo companies. Actually, in one of the limo, the Kickstart was one of the big limo companies. I was uh, interviewed to be hired as a vice president of operation to the with a very great salary. And okay. I met with the owner, and they they told told me like you're gonna be a, a great asset to our company, but for some reason they hired another person and. Uh, and that's what I said, like, I'm not going to put my destiny yeah. on someone's decision. So let me start what I know. I only know the chauffeur industry. Let me get the the one car. I created just a, a simple website. It's just maybe a, a landing page as a contact yeah, yeah. information. Perfect. And I did the business card that had a picture, the picture on uh, a picture on the business card. And I went to the LCT show in 2019, March 2019. Now, was that your first kind of exposure to like working with other affiliates? Had you done any affiliate work before then? Um, do you remember? I, I, I took the decision of have of having everything all in in the limo business, February 2019. Oh, wow. So you remember like, and, yes. and that's right before the show, right? Because yes. they were usually in like March, right? Yes, yes. And I went to the show and I was impressed with the amount of knowledge that I gained because here's the, all my information about transportation industry. I used to wait at the cell phone lot, go pick up a client, drop him at the city, just like having an app, writing a company name out there. I don't know what's going on. It's just like all of my information. Just like I see a lot, a bunch of people, a bunch of black cars, wearing the suits. We're running around. We're cleaning the cars. That's what I know about yeah. transportation. When I went there, I start to see like, oh, that's where the business is coming from. That's where the, oh, uh -huh. I start seeing the companies that I used to see their names on the app. Ah, like the big, the big limo. affiliates, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. When I used to be a limo driver, oh, this is the company that I drove their clients before. This is this, this is that. And um, attending the sessions helped me so much to understand what kind of industry I'm in, what challenges and what uh, failure stories, like most I wanted to hear about the failures more than the success stories because yeah. all success stories people tells what they what, what they see. You never you, you never you, you will never feel what they've been through if you do not, if you never been through it. It's just yeah. success comes out of a lot of sweat. We're just saying sweet stories right now, but success never comes from sweet stories. It just comes from yeah. sweat, come from not sleep. It's just like you you have to be yeah. old. Fail, fail, fail. And then exactly. you figure out, I won't do that again next time. I, and then exactly. you do something else wrong, right? And exactly. then you won't do that exactly. next time. Yeah, yeah. So meeting meeting a lot of people out there and talking about their experiences, how they do business, where they get their business from, uh, what's the challenges, how did they start? Uh, when I tell them my story, everybody told me like, oh, we started like you 10 years ago. And that's where I feel like, okay, I'm on the right direction. It's just like my decisions there's other people took the same decisions one day and they're they made it so yeah that's, yeah that's when you get the the signs that you, you're going on the right direction or no um uh, i came back from that show with almost like 123 business cards whoa I talked to every every single person in person i wasn't that just interfering people i wasn't rude it just like no but it just you smile to people and just go and talk, introduce yourself. Two, three minutes is more than enough just to say hi and bye. This is yeah. me. This is you. This is what I do. This is what you do. If there is a catch, if there is like the, the connect happened, you're not going to feel the conversation. It's just going to take itself. You're yeah, just yeah, gonna yeah. Keep going and going. Totally. If nothing, you just give the great smile, have the business card, go back, follow up emails, blah, blah, blah. That's it. That's it. 
Speaking and, uh, of following up, what what did you do? So you get back from the show, you have like a huge stack of cards. Yes. Um, what did you do at that point to start getting some of these uh, aff big affiliates, um, you know, to use you and, and farm work to you? I, I, I would say first show is different. The second show is different. The third show. When I had 123 business cards, just names and company names. When you Google them, you just see a website. You don't know who's that. Sometimes the the biggest, the, the most business that I got from the shittiest business card that I have, like the most, the, the, the best affiliate, the number one affiliate that I have right now is the shittiest business card out of those ones. Wow. So it just and goes to show you don't need a perfect card. You just need exactly. to go and- No, and actually, you, 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 I'm not saying that too, but it's just like I'm saying when you're, when you're filtering your data, the data that you got from the show, you never know which is the, maybe this affiliate is not the right affiliate for you. Maybe this is, yeah. they don't have that business. They like the most fancy business cards. You're just going to find it from social, uh, like small size companies or maybe independent. Uh, operators. I, I see what you just want to show. So it's, it's very confusing because my first show, I had a bunch of business cards. I didn't know who, which one of them has business for us and which one of them they just doing the same as we're doing. They just look for business. Yeah. So, oh, I see. So okay. basically, so how'd yeah, you figure that out? First show impossible to tell you that I figured that out. They just like ah. put all the data on Outlook, do the email, the BCC. This is who we are. Thank you for meeting us. Just you want to. So you sent an email to everyone, but you didn't know yeah. who was a good potential, you know, client exactly. for you exactly. guys until exactly. the next show maybe the fifth show wow okay it takes a lot of like the second show i started to do the same i went back with 100 business cards and let me tell you like last show i went back with five business cards me personally talking to people because you start knowing everyone it's yeah just like everyone after going there for several times eight nine times not actually 10 times right now i start to know you go faces. so you go to every one of them now oh yeah right? I, even now we take a table out there just like to 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 expose like we we I would love to know everybody out there. I won't. I we would love to learn everything. I start taking my brother and just like, it's 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 been very beneficial to learn from others while there. And you're never gonna have a chance to meet a thousand other people that is the, doing the same thing that you're doing, and you can learn from them. Yeah. Whether you're doing affiliate and you want to get to retail, you're going to find a bunch of people are doing retail. You can just learn from their stories. You can get referrals from them. You can like, yeah, if you're working with, you're going to find all the affiliates, even talking with people, you're going to know which, what is the names that you want to uh, work with? Oh, yeah. We know the big companies that they have business, which everyone knows them and everyone chase them, but the yeah. small operators doesn't know them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or the newbies yeah. when you're first time exactly. at your show you don't know who's who right and exactly it, yeah. exactly i'm not sure if we're allowed to say company names here but I just like yeah as long as, it, to... as long as it's good things about them i'm sure like no one oh, would yeah, mind. Of course. <laughs> oh, of course. oh yeah of course of course of course of course yeah yeah but just like i mean um like when i went there just like i only know boston coach yeah i only know like that all the companies if you work with this company you're gonna make a lot of money just go work go work go work and that by that time so that's but like when i went there i found like there's a lot of opportunities there other than one company that you just go for other than the major major affiliates by the exactly. way because i'm sure most of the people watching this don't even know who are the the biggest affiliates boston coach who else uh isn't carrie a big one Oh yeah, Carry, uh -huh. Empire CLS, Music yeah. Express. Um, uh, there's ones that they have their own vehicles, and there's ones that they just don't have. Like the, they those only do affiliate. Companies. Yeah, uh, isn't uh, Empire? They only farm out, right? They don't actually have their. So here, here's the thing: big companies, the 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 the, the size of companies like Carry, Empire, Boston Coach, they prefer to work with large fleets companies because they uh -huh. deal with a lot of they deal with a lot of trips every day. They don't want. When the dispatcher has like 300, 400, 500 trips every day, they don't want to call you and check for availability for each. Like you want to give them a hard Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. That I makes a lot send, of like, Yeah, just take those 30 trips and just you figure it out. If, you, if you're going to farm out two, three jobs out of those, oh, it's fine. But it's but we're not going to make our dispatch to go over each company just to farm out like two, three jobs here, two, three jobs there. And even managing them is just much harder. It requires more. So That makes sense. So if you're a small... Let's say, you know, 
you were doing Uber Black, you're going to your first show. What do you reckon? So, you know, the big affiliates are probably not, you know, unless you have a large fleet, they're probably not your ideal client. Um, are you just trying to find like smaller, I guess, limo businesses in your area that are maybe medium size, like maybe five to 10 vehicles that you're networking with or, and they don't even have to be in your city, right? I mean, many times they're probably in other places. Are Is that who you're trying to meet? Like mid size. Oh, actually, actually, as an independent operator, what's more beneficial for you is just to go after those companies who targets the IOs. Like for example, uh, like Bla Blackway, Savoya, Limolink, uh, TBR, like um, those companies that they don't own vehicles, but they want to have a bunch of IOs in each city that can serve their clients and they work with their own app. And it was with, Black Lane, Savoya, Limo Link. Limo Link. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Yeah, Fortis. There's a lot. There's a lot of. There's a lot of them. Uh, okay, and they work with yeah. the individual. You can start independent operators. Yes. They target. They want to work more. Late. And 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 they're changing their models. There's some companies that are changing their models because independent operators, from a company from a fleet perspective, like from the the farm out perspective, it's not reliable. Yeah, uh, you might change your mind because you got like a better offer from from somewhere else. If okay. you got problems, you don't have an immediate solution for us. In emergencies, you don't have alternatives. You don't have uh, substitutes. So what I what I would target first is, as long as you're independent operator, you don't need outside affiliates. You just need your local affiliates to start depending on you, so you can get more business. Start uh... with your local local affiliates first uh and try yeah. to meet those at the shows or you you can probably even meet those if you're on a job right like a concert and there's other drivers around do you ever because i i talked to an, another gentleman a few weeks ago and he was like that's how i meet some of my affiliates just literally on the job site where do you typically um meet them is it the shows is it through i'm sure there's several ways so I, I, when i started to look for local affiliates it's just easy as just go to the office right away they're just like oh really easy. okay so okay, just, just take it bro take your car take your suit go to your go go to their office present yourself hey this is who i am i i'm ready to yes. do your jobs that's it it's just like you don't need more than that just go to their there offices yeah go to their offices knock the door who's your, who's the guys I'll, i'm interested i got my own car i got my own ttcp here's my permits here's my insurance here's who's going to serve your clients yeah here's my yes, vehicle that's yeah that's it that's it build the, build the connection that's the easiest way to start. Definitely meeting other drivers between the jobs. That's great. But like talking to them is great of to know about anything. But like, let's agree, like nobody's going to share everything about the job. Nobody's going to tell you. No, no. Like, yeah. Nobody's allowed to tell you which company that I'm getting the job from. Maybe uh, uh, I'm not going to tell it. There's a lot of, you're not going to get the, just go straight to the. Uh, Local. To where you wanna, exactly. Companies. Uh, the, the show for uh for big for for independent operators it's more of educational it's ah uh, i see so not as much networking maybe once you get bigger and you want to do affiliate work then you can meet the bigger affiliates if you have a larger of, fleet of but... course and 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 we there's a say that i always work with you better be ready so you don't have to get ready so when uh... you get bigger when you build that from the first day you start to go and meet people and know to them when you get bigger you know them already. Yeah, not it's not your first for... time, right? You're not a new face. Exactly. They, they exactly. trust you more implicitly because exactly. they've seen you a few times, right? Exactly, exactly. So your first show might not be for the getting business purpose, but maybe the second or the third one will be like, you know exactly who you want to work, how to present yourself in, a, in the right way. What exactly do, do they need from you? Because it took me a long to understand like what kind of, What's the important stuff that all affiliates care about? Like it's just like yeah. they basically care about the status. They care about like the job confirmation detail before. The status uh, meaning like what your availability is like or or status updates. The status updates. Oh, where, got like, it. Okay. When you're on the way, where you're on a ride, with if you're doing those things correctly, accurately, on time, from a dispatch standpoint, you're doing great. The second part is the customer feedback. If you did a great job and there's no complaints, there's no news is a good news. This is what yeah, 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 yeah. industry. But yeah. yeah, I work with some affairs that they say like no news is a bad news. That means that we did not hit 
the we did not provide the best service. Oh, because that means that you didn't get normal. good feedback. You that know, that means that we're normal. No news is a good. Yeah. That means that and, and we shouldn't be. No, and, that is that's a great learning right there. What you yep, just yep. said. No news. Yeah, you could see that as good news because they didn't complain. But do we just want to get someone to not complain? That's kind of like just doing the bare minimum, right? You're just working to keep your job. Yeah. No, yes. that is, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. so true. So true. So, uh, yeah. So uh, it's very important to understand what is the industry like independent operators think about it from a perspective. Oh, how much am I going to make per day? How much am I going to pay? And that's the only thing that they think about it. But like, guys, let me tell you this. You guys are investors. You guys are entrepreneurs. You're not just drivers on, uh, or even if you're doing Uber, you went to a dealer, you took the risk, you're paying a high interest, you're paying insurance, you're risking your life every day on the street driving. You might get into like something that just like, sure, with no coverage for your family. It's just like, guys, you are entrepreneurs. So you can start a business without learning about the industry, the yeah. market, the market, which is competition, and even if you're not having that much education to to let you make that studies, but at least you know who's your competitors. Yeah, if yeah. You have a sh it doesn't matter. You need to know like what's the next door service. How is it like? How much is it? So you can tell like what's the difference between me you and them. So you can provide something unique. You know the unique value proposition. Totally. Yes. Exactly. That way you're not a commodity, right? Because I hear it all the time you know, oh, everyone's complaining we're cheap. Well, if you don't stand out, right? And if you they think you're just the same as the guy next to you, right? And you guys both provide the exact same thing, then who wouldn't care about price, right? Who wants to pay more for the same thing? Correct. And this is my biggest challenge in uh, scaling. Before, like a year, like in back in December, back in 2020, I was a one-man show company. Now we start to have a dispatcher, start to have my brother partner with me and helping with me with operation. And I start to scale it, to like to delegate a lot of tasks. And that's my biggest challenge is just, I start to you lose my unique value proposition. It's just my relationship. Ah, because my it's client. not just you doing it. You have to rely on other people and, and you have a, a, a somewhat unique business model, right? You just, you have a couple, um, is it family members or or close friends that you're all kind of working together and you're kind of giving them jobs? Maybe once in a while they give you a job. Is that so? Yeah. One one of, one of the things that just helped me a lot. Uh, just my dad's advice is always telling me like uh, it's it's a funny story, but it's just you know. Let's hear you need, it. Yeah, it's. I have an extra two hundred dollars, uh, and I told him like, Dad, I'm just gonna send you this two hundred dollar. Give it give it to poor people. Yeah. So he's just like, it's just like for good causes. Sure. So he's telling me like, is that what God waiting for you from you? I said like, huh? He said like, God gave you like a, a father like me, just like gave me, gave you the opportunity and the resources to have your master's and degree in Silicon Valley, one of yeah. the top places in the world. Sure. And you're just, yeah. and you're just giving him back two hundred dollars to the poor people. You yeah. should be hiring a thousand people, bro. It's just like you yeah. cannot just. God is waiting from you. It's just much more than that. It's just like you need to be the cause of helping those people finding better lifestyles. Just if you want, yeah, to you can do get, more because two hundred dollars exactly. that doesn't do much. But if you hire two hundred people and give them work and allow exactly. them to provide for their families, exactly, wow. exactly. And that, and that's oh, when okay. I went back to my wife and I just told her like, hey, we might not make that much money this year, but we need to be like we need to build a team. We need to have yeah. a team of people that we care about and they care about us and we grow the business together because it's always unity is a strength and division is a weakness i yeah. would never be able to compete with big or big guys without having a, a strong team behind me and let's yeah. look at us we don't have money we don't have anything so all what we gotta do is just we give them bigger share of the business that we're gonna get them and we're gonna sacrifice our profits for the first year yeah and without her supporting me i would never be in that position Without my dad's words, I would never jump to that business and just start. And that's where my life starts to change. Wow. Uh, and it's a family thing, which is which is yes. awesome. Yes. Uh, also, one of the benefits from the show, 
there was an international lawyer that came to discuss the employment uh, problem. Uh, remember the employment contracting problem with Uber? The Sue, the Oh, right, the right. Lawsuit, what was going on in California? SR 22 yes. or something like that. Yeah. No, actually, even before that, even before. Oh, like, really? Uber, okay. Yeah. They were about to shut Uber, uh, but it, it went from a lot of, like it went a lot. Of, in a Eventually, lot of Uber won that, right? Because <laughs> they exactly. had like a billion dollars behind them. Yeah, you know. They what were, can yeah, you they're not gonna lose. Yeah. So there was one international lawyer came and made a speech about like sweat partners, and back to the values that you might gain from the show. That was my first show, yeah. and I came back with an idea of sweat partners. It's just like okay, let me attract my friends and my network. For them to be a sweat partners in my company so we can represent ourselves as like seven vehicles and also seven drivers yeah and be able to supply the business that i brought back from the show when i went there yeah and luckily we got a great team great partners we all partnered together uh we i bought them cars under the company under my okay. name and we made a, a formulation of a sweat partner sweat partner agreement. Okay. Uh, basically, it's a it's a commission based agreement. Okay. Uh, I take a commission, my cut from the business that I get them. Uh, and what's the benefit were... of that structure, like the the sweat partner structure? What are some of the benefits of that? Position yourself uh, with just cut to be able to go to the next level of. I'm not an independent operator. I'm a fleet operator. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. So I had, I had to bigger. show, yes, I had to show that we're a team. Yeah. We are six vehicles, seven vehicles. We are employees. We have employees. We have drivers. We have the, so I couldn't do that with my own investment. So I, we have to do, and, 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 and this is the story just like, maybe it's, it's not relevant, but. Look at the biggest companies in the world. It's always started with partners. Yeah. None of them started with one, per one person. No, you're there's right. A person, there's a person always represent the brand. And that's because he's the ready one. In yeah. very small circumstances, he just plays the others. But <laughs> yeah, but like, it's just that person who represent the brand. And, and that's where everyone with the team Right now, all of my all my ex sweat partners they have their own companies, they have their own cars, they have their own drivers. We all benefited out of this partnership. Sure. And the most important thing in this is to have an exit strategy, because if you don't have exit strategy from this partnerships, it's gonna hurt. There's a lot of people are suing each other. They were partners. You, you hear a lot of, of those stories from our industry. Partners okay. they're suing each other. And that's because they never had an exit strategy. Ah, so have a plan going in just yes. in case at some point you need to dissolve the relationship. There's no in case. There's no in case. It will be resolved anyways. Yeah, but yeah. We're using, each, we're using each other right now to start from a point that is, we will never be able to start from two years later if everybody yeah. by, by himself. Yeah. And you're probably more attractive to the bigger affiliates because you do now have pretty much a larger, you're like a solo unit, right? Instead of just yes. being an IO, you kind of combine your forces and yes. um, that way and they don't have to learned. make seven, five calls, right? They can make one yep. call. Yep, yep. And I learned and, and I learned about it because I never knew anything about dispatching, reservation, putting reservation on the system. I never knew that limo anywhere to do a limo anywhere. After maybe a thousand trip, I start learning how to create an invoice. It just it was very challenging. So I couldn't handle all of this if they were not partnering with me. I wouldn't have much more time for hiring, training, buying cars. And yeah. their uh, and their story is just like they don't have much time to go uh, represent their brand and start to build network and get business from others. It's just like so it was win-win situation for all of us. Yeah. And, and, and how'd you pick them? Is it some family members, uh, just some close friends? How, how did you find these other partners? One's your brother, right? Starts with my brother. Uh, I had a lot of a close friend. It might be funny, but yeah, I used to, uh, to wait at the cell phone lot at Uber Black. We okay. used to, to wait at the cell phone lot. Yeah, we convinced another three, four people there. Just oh, nice. Renting the cars. 
they were renting a cars out there. We told them like, guys, we're a team. We're going to do that. You're just going to get out of it with your own car, with your own company. You're going to be work having work with us. Yeah. As a subcontractor. Yeah. Uh, if you don't want it, you don't, you, you can, you can reject it, but it's just like what we can assure that all of us two years from now, we're start from somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. And, wow. And, that's awesome. And that's what I can advise IOs who wants to get more exposure to fleets. You yeah. need to work in teams. If yeah. you have the right team to work with and divide responsibilities and tasks so you can guys accomplish the job. If you think you're ready for this, go do it. If you And how does it work financially? Like meaning, um, so you bring in a job and I'm guessing you have a prearranged sort of deal where you price something out and do they have a fee? They're like, I need to get this much or is it a percentage typically or is it a different agreement with each different partner? I'm guessing it's- exactly. Okay. You put them, yeah, you put them on the whole picture. They were aware of all the, we were partners. So they were aware of the, how much the, the trip is, uh, I'm getting it for, I get my 20%, they get their 80%. But I see, this. okay. Uh, first year, I wasn't even making 3% just the credit card fees. As I told you the first year, I wanted them to make the money because uh, I started to work with the cheaper affiliates. Like you remember at that time, there was Groundlink, there was uh, six, there was, and they were just giving a $65 airport trip or $55 oh, airport and trip. And you can't just give 80% so, of that because it's it's low as it is, right? Sometimes I just take dollar because of my time. When I just uh, close the invoice, I just like, I'm not going to make any- Yeah, yeah, right? So I just yeah. make myself feel I got compensated at least. Yeah. And that's that's how it, uh, jumping to affiliate, like I started having that list. You need to have a list of your potential clients. I started to have that list of all the affiliates I want to jump in. There is two types of affiliates. There's affiliates that you can fill uh, their application online. Okay. They have, okay. A, they have a drive with us section. That they can just go and fill your up, fill your information, put your insurance, put your how much your cars is, and that's an easy one to do. Yeah. And there's other ones that you need to reach out with them, like either through their contact form on their website or through an email. And you okay. just make it, you just make a call, a phone call to their to the dispatch. Hey guys, who's the affiliate manager? Who's responsible for onboarding uh, partners in this area, for example? Yeah. And they just even if they didn't give you the phone number or they didn't connect you with them, they they can give you his email. And you Got can it. start sending, you can start sending. And these aren't local ones because you said in the beginning when you're just starting out and when you're trying to start doing affiliate work, right? Because maybe Uber Black is inconsistent. And while you can make, it's like feast or famine, right? You're either killing it or you're not making anything. Like first things first, find some local companies, show up, shake hands. But when you're talking about going online, is that for like the bigger, like Black Lane, Savoya, and like registering yes. or yes. or just people out of your area yes. maybe that aren't yes. local yes those, ones. yes those ones black lane savoy those etc okay ones. yes and as far as the pay goes is it i'm get, i'm sure it's all across the board like for instance you're doing work for a local affiliate they're going to pay you a certain amount and then black lane do they have kind of predetermined rates or does it work on a job per job basis or so i will, I will tell you something you just the way that I started is to accept whatever rate that he tell me about. If okay. you're an IO and a small operator and just like looking for jobs and applying for jobs, you just got to make sure that everybody's going to use you. And you need ah. to make that period as short as much as possible and you can learn quickly. That's why I advise you to go to the show so you can work on going to the next level quickly. You don't waste time that much. If you're an IO and just try to get some business, definitely you're getting the cheapest. You're just getting, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're new and you just want to build a reputation, right? Exactly. In the beginning of exactly. being someone exactly. who over delivers. Exactly. exactly. Nobody knows about your service. Like, why would I pay you or have someone who I'm working with for 10 years? Who like, I trust. Why would I leave that guy? Just like, yeah. yeah, you better give me a better offer. So most likely it will be chill. It will, the first two years, I used to accept whatever prices that I was provided. Right now, no matter who I'm working with, this is my prices, this is my cost. You want to do it? And it's based on a lot of factors, cost factor. Uh, and, and, and the pricing is very sensitive. And we can, we can talk 
in this topic for forever. Yeah. There's different pricing strategy. You can no there's no perfect way to set your prices. It depends on which strategy that you want to go for. You want to go on a cost structure. Yeah. You want to calculate all of your costs or all of your expenses and just add a specific margin on the top of it. Yeah. But it's very tricky because there's a lot of hidden expenses. Yeah. In our industry, we don't put it in our business plan. That's no, the, like, for sure. And exactly. and if the margin's really small, you could easily yes. eat into that whole margin if yes. you're like, oh, I forgot about those few small costs. So you really have to know your numbers, right? Which probably yes. helps that you did the MBA and everything because you're probably pretty decent at, you know, figuring out costs. I don't even have the number for what's my cost per mile. What's yeah. my cost per, per minute? What's my cost per hour? What's my cost per, I, I don't even, as you're saying, it's tough. It's not easy. No, no, I get it. Like you do, uh, you know, drive with a client. Maybe it's uh, two hours one way. Maybe you're waiting for two hours, you know, all those yep. costs are different. Yep. You're still paying yep. an hourly for the employee, yep. but you have no fuel. Yep. And yep. so, Yep, I yep, can see yep. how that would be uh, yep. complicated. You can, you can, you can. This, the other way of setting your strategy is based on your competition, the market, the market strategy based on. You just see what's your position. Uh, definitely, there is. There's some companies are selling the the hour, the SUV hour for one twenty five, and there's some other IOs are selling their SUV hour for seventy dollars or seventy five dollars. Oh that, wow! The, that that difference is definitely. I'm gonna if X company that they have 20 vehicles and they're selling the hour for 125, that's because basically this hour pays for two vehicles because none of the 20 vehicles are not outside all the time. Mostly 10 yeah. vehicles are out and 10 vehicles are in. Oh. So each vehicle is working outside is paying for two vehicles. Ah, cause they've got a much bigger overhead, right? And when exactly. those vehicles are sitting. Trying, yes. I'm trying to explain it with simple way, not to use sure. the overhead call. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah. Totally. They have rent. Yeah, they have rent. They have to park those cars. They have workers' compensation. I never saw those kind of stuff before I get into it. Right. Uh, Hard cost that that you have. Exactly. If you don't even take the car out and drive it, you're paying these costs every single month, right? And yes. then you have, you know, fancy word, your variable costs, which just means however many miles you drive jobs you do hours you work yep, it changes yep, yep yep so that's 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 the two strategies that you can set your uh prices based on uh Got it. okay and competition is very important to be aware of what's going on what's what's out there uh if you're providing a service and you never requested your competition to check how they're doing their services this is something you, you need to do. Okay. You need to do always. You need to let your family use limo companies so you can see the difference. Uh, wow, you need to, that's powerful. Is, that's so. That's part, of, that's part of your research cost. That's your R and D cost. Uh, I started to have an argument with my aunt because she always traveled in LA, and I told her like, "Hey, I have clients out there." I need you to see the cars that the, the vendors that we're using out there. I need you to check to give me a feedback. If is there well water, he's on time, communication, he's nice, yes. he's wearing the suit. I need that kind of feedback that my client will never give me detailed feedback. He's just gonna tell uh, me, yeah, he was that's great. That's so or not. true. That's so exactly. true. What kind of new things that we can add? Maybe he can add like it's not about only I'm 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 testing him out. Maybe he can teach us something new. Oh, we found this kind of thing. We can't. We found this a uh, travel size thing that he has. We found this uh, pretzels. We found this uh, mint. We found yeah, this. yeah. It just whatever kind of idea that you can bring. Oh, this is why you're not having this. You have this. Uh, so it's it's very important for That's all clever. the industry because you can get industry. ideas of what to do and maybe what you know not yes. to do. Yes, yes, of course. And that's that's what I uh, try to tell everybody. Just like go get to other people's carts so you can see what what they're doing. Totally. Uh, that's yeah. That's one of the tricks that we do sometimes. That is no no. That's so smart. It's funny you say that because for the longest time I wasn't using black car services, and you know while I don't own a limo company, I am marketing for them, and of course I need to see what the actual experience is like of using like a black car service. So now that's all I use. Uh, when I travel and it's great because it, I can see 
there's a wide range of quality, right? Some show up, you know, just with a t-shirt, which I don't care as much, but I could see certain clients, you know, big executives, maybe they care about that, right? Of course, of course. You know, are the driver class doesn't about. care, but like the affiliate that you're getting business from already set his standards to their clients. Even the clients that yes. doesn't, if, it, if the client doesn't care, you made the people liars because they they sold a they sold a package with a specific standards with a, with yes. a specific price based on something. You just screwed things up. It's yeah. Just, yeah, right. And, and it's maybe a little more uncomfortable to wear a suit, but I mean, it does portray an image of luxury, of course. Of course. right? It just it just shows your discipline. Yeah. So what would you say now that you're what? Start in 2019 or four years into it, COVID was sucked, obviously, uh, but it, it's all coming back. What are the biggest benefits now, now that you're not doing Uber Black anymore, right? And you're mainly, you're 60% affiliate, 40% your own clients. What do you like most about uh, your business now compared to when you were just doing Uber Black? Is it mainly the consistent income or are there any other benefits? That you can uh, think of off the top the of your seal, head? It's, the seal is the sky. Ah, I see. Okay. On Uber, on Uber, you're just limited to the number of car or number of trips. So just like you're you're limited. Like yeah. you can't grow more than X amount a month. And if you didn't make it the second month, you're just fighting for the, the, the third month. Uh, all of my days, if, if a lot of Uber guys watching me right now is guys it's all about not like when you're when you're on your car and you're just looking at your phone you're just thinking about like oh if i if i did this 20 dollars, it's just gonna be a hundred dollar if i get another airport ride it's just gonna make me 200 and when you get to the 200 you're just like okay if i got like one more ride i'm gonna be 300 and this one more ride can cost you like five six hours on the street and wasting your day and you never get it yeah also like now you can make money when you're not even doing rides, right? What if you get a ride, uh, you know, you have the client and you're farming it out, you make that 20% or whatever that might be, and you don't even have to get in the car and drive anyone, right? Uber is Uber is great for you to learn, uh, yeah. to keep it a side, a side gig. As a primarily uh, business, no. And a lot of limousine operators were not like what we're talking about because it's been challenging having the same standard from Uber drivers to a limousine industry. Yeah. Well, it's just like one of the things that Uber drivers need to understand is it's totally different industry. Yeah, it's, it's exactly. you're just you're using, you're driving, you're having the same vehicle that you're driving for Uber, but it's totally different. Yeah. That's the only matching things that the similar between both. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. The level of, if you're that kind of person who knows what customer service and what customer experience is, and you wear the suit on your Uber rides, you're you're perfect. You don't need to do that much. You're doing a great job. That's what you need in the limousine industry. Yes. But when you go to the limousine industry and 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 not and still debating is the suit is important or not, is the price is low or high, uh, is the margin is this or that? It's just like there is some points that the small that the, the uber drivers need to understand you're not going to make much money as you're making on uber uh but it's consistent it's stable. yes it um it creates a value because when you're doing uber right yes your rating is going up but the client is not going to request you again but if yeah. you're doing a limousine right and the client likes you he's just going to request you from the company that he booked booked the ride from ah uh. that's you can keep that business and that's that's the pawn that's the cons of working with affiliates working with affiliates you don't own the client the client yes. is your affiliate exactly when, when the client wants to request you you're just going to tell him oh that that's thank you so much for for mentioning that but please so when you book the trip next time please let the company know my name so they can put me on the trip Exactly. And, and you always country, do that. You never yes. want the reputation of poaching clients. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's yeah. Not worth it never worth but, it. Yes. But but at the end of the day, the, the affiliate has the right not to assign you the job and tell the, the his client, oh, this driver is not available. Maybe he yeah, has yeah. an in-house car and just do it. So 
you, you're going to lose that client. But jumping to the next level, retail business, if you have a retail business and the client got into your car and he wants you, no, that's your client. That's yes. not somebody else's client. So that's the real value is you just, that's what we call client acquisition cost. You just like whatever that you totally. acquired that, you acquired that client. Yeah. Uh, and typically, yeah, you have more pricing power. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of benefits yeah. to it. And of course, of course. yeah, of course. man, Muhammad, this has been incredible. Um, so many things I'm sure people watching have learned, especially those that, you know, want to eventually transition, start their own limo business and uh man it's uh it's going to be really cool to see where you're at in a few years so you know promote yourself man so right now it's it's five of you you guys primarily run suvs you're located in the bay area correct uh, what, what five of us uh so uh right now with you and your partners there's five of you you operate in the bay area nope. Nope, no more partners. We uh, we we ended the partnership uh, December twenty twenty two. Oh, okay. Uh, since January twenty twenty three, everything is in house, all in house. Me and my brother are only partners in the company, and definitely our wives. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, yep, yeah. and then then no more partners. It's all in house drivers. Definitely, we use IOs for overcapacity jobs. We definitely have a lot of great IOs here uh, since we're doing this for a long time and we had the yeah. build partners with them. You but have a yeah. good network built out. Yes. Oh, of course. Of course. We we, we were able to manage a lot of stuff that we were imp like impressed that we have. It's just like sometimes we didn't believe. And when I shared this with the team, it just, it's not because of us. It's because of the team. Everyone yeah. knows that you have a great team behind you. That that what makes people trust you. Yeah. And, uh, yep. And uh, that's, a, that's, yeah, that's about it. Awesome. Hey, well, thanks so much for doing this, guys. Uh, if you need an affiliate in the Bay Area, um, hit up Mohammed. Th those are his numbers uh, behind you. Um, what's a good, uh, uh, what, what's your uh, website? Uh, is it bngworldwide.com or something? No, bnglimousine.com. bnglimousine.com. Awesome. Yeah. I really want to thank you, Mark, for this opportunity. I hope we provided some values for for the small operators, for Uber drivers. Uh, we just touch any points. If there's anything that anyone wants to ask, let them leave it on the comments and definitely we can uh, answer. I hope it's valuable. I'm so sorry we were over, all over the place. There's a lot. No, to this about. was great. This was this great. Is, yeah, this is my first time to be on the camera. So I hope I... You I did, did incredible, job. incredible yeah. job. Thank yeah. You. So you thanks again. Feel comfortable. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, guys, thanks for watching. And Mohammed, thanks for joining. Thank and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay. Thank you. Have a great day.